key in place. Really exciting day. Uh, it's not not going to happen like this every day, you know. Two engines from China. That one's going brilliantly. Still struggling with the H73 over there, but we have um, another engine, and this is one I'm hugely excited about. Before I start, let me just remind you of what we've had on this channel, Thomas PC Guru Engines. This is the, uh, the Harley V2, Harley-esque V2 model from Sison, and the the uh, the box and the frame and the petrol tank and everything is uh, is mine. Now I've had some issues with this. The issues have been ignition failing uh, and the hall sensor failing. Um, I've soldered up another hall sensor, got it behind there, and this is running. But we have one cylinder with great compression, no issues, and one with pretty crappy. Uh, seem to have had issues. So I still have to work on that to get that one going perfectly. Are we today going to get a V2 model engine, gasoline, working model engine, with no issues at all? Do you think that's possible? This has come from Jin, and Jin and Microcosm are releasing a couple of uh, motorcycle engines, a V2 and a single version of the same thing. And he's pretty pumped about these, from what I could read in his comments. He has, uh, I believe, incorporated some kind of minute carburetor float in this V-twin model. Another um, piece of paper with Chinglish in it. And the model is, I'll bring this up, beautifully packed. You know, that's, that's good packing. No problems there. I can see the little float down there with the cap off. He's uh, created a, a carburetor that's much more um, scale than some of his other engines. Let's get that out and have a look at it. Okay, um, as usual, recently we are getting spare piston uh, rings with the engines. Uh, I'm looking for the top of the float and not seeing one. I'm not sure whether it's supposed to have a top. I think I saw in some, uh, some pictures it did have a top and some it didn't. So I was expecting a top. If there isn't one and it's supposed to have one, I can definitely make it. The little chrome, chrome cap here is quite pretty. Let's just get a zoom in on that. So this is a chrome cap. I'm not sure how well you can see that. If you can hear a noise in the background, it's my cat playing with the box that this came in. Um, looks like we've got a hall sensor in in here. Hall sensor's in here. We've got two uh, spark plug motors here. Uh, this carburetor, we seem to have a, an adjusting needle here and one on the top. Uh, this seems to be an air filtery kind of a scale thing. Petrol, uh, one screw holding on each of these caps. Uh, let's feel the compression. So, uh, look, both absolutely outstanding. The compression again really strong and really strong both i mean that's geez can it really be that i've got two engines from microcosm with perfect valves seems to be seems to be i'm just going to move that a little bit over there we're we gonna we're we gonna start this up 
right now. Uh, I think I just found three perfect batteries. Oh, I'll put those in. So we've got a white. Um, we've got a white ignition box there. Okay, let's put some petrol in this. Or gasoline, as you Yanks say. Let's have a look. Check the wiring, use gasoline, turn the flywheel clockwise for multiple turns to make the mixture fully enter into the cylinder. Make sure there's no air in the fuel pipe. Turn on the power switch and blah, 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 blah. In the process of starting the machine, you need to cover the air inlet gently with your hand and release it instantly. Do this several times. Okay, this is called priming. Right, let's have a go. Priming, how would you prime a motor like this? Got a drop of petrol coming off the bottom of that there, so that might might be a leak. It might not be, it might have been me dropping it on. Anyway, let's just go straight in to try and start this up. Okay, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's out of fuel. I think that's out of fuel. Well, that worked. That worked beautifully. That worked great. But I don't know where my throttle control is or even if I have a throttle control. Let's try this again. So we're going to put a bit more fuel in it. See if we can get that working again. Because you're probably aware I took most of the fuel out. Right, let's see. Try and figure out what's going on here. Yeah, that's a great sound, isn't it? Oh, okay. Okay, it's running on one cylinder. And there we go. Okay, so that's definitely, that's our choke there, and I think this is our throttle. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't that? That is just so cool. That is so cool. I just bumped it off with my, fin with my finger, but on the switch, we'll start that up again. And it's uh, reliable. Okay. That, oh, look, I wouldn't panic about that. What's happening there is almost certainly a fouled spark plug. 
Um, and I think that once we clean that spark plug, that'll be going again. I noticed before when I opened that, that the, the spark plug was pretty grubby and oily already. And these microcosm engines are renowned for, well, at least they're renowned in my, uh, I was going to say workshop, but kitchen is more like what we're in at the moment. In my kitchen, um, with my microcosm engines, they are always getting fouled spark plugs. Generally, it's a good idea to clean the spark plugs before you start the engine every single time. That one's proving hard to get out. Of course, I'm always panicking about cross-threading these things, but no, it's away now. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that um, thread of that, but let's just check. Let's just zoom in on my paw. Yeah, and yeah, that's... Yeah, that was filthy. So, yeah, I'll get the um, I'll get the uh, brush in there, and we'll improve that situation. I have a small paintbrush, which, along with some petrol. In fact, I believe I've got a wee tin over here that is full of full of petrol for exactly this eventuality. Just got to open it without flicking it all over the kitchen, the cats and myself. Uh, yeah, there we go. So Uh, interesting. Look at this. I believe these are smaller than um, than the um, than what we've had previously. And you notice this, notice that it's got a rubber ring, one of those green rubber rings, rather than a copper washer, which is more common. So this doesn't need to be done up as tight as one with a copper washer. That is worth knowing right there. That's why you watch this channel. We bring you the good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's just. So that's probably why it felt loose to start with for me. Right. Oh, I'm going to put a tiny, teeny, tiddly little bit of grease in the thread there. So I'm more confident of when this is actually um, done up. Where are you, grease? Here you go. Okay. A little bit of grease there. Just a smidge on the thread. And we'll pop that back in. Okay, it's pretty clear, isn't it? That's open. Oh, wait a second. Open, closed, open, closed, open. Okay, so maybe I had the choke on the whole time. May I, no wonder that was um, no wonder that was fouling up the spark plugs. We'll get that right. Okay, so choke off, throttle down. Let's start that. Well, that's just bloody fantastic. I'm absolutely delighted. What's the temperature? It's fine, and it's fine. I'm going to do that again. I love that sound. Oh, I love this. Again, please. Oh, 
yeah, that's that's the good stuff right there, people. That is so cool. I'm just going to take the petrol out because I need to go and um, pick up a kid from sport. Oh, okay, put the petrol back in there. I'm going to have such fun with this. That sound is just going to blow some of that through. Epically good, that is. Epically good. Fantastic. Two microcosm engines in a row that are just absolutely bloody perfect. 